Thanks, Bev. At this time, do we have any citizens with us here today that uh, have anything that they would like to bring up or uh, an item that they'd like included in a future agenda? If not, uh, we want to welcome everybody and those in our viewing audience to participate in our uh, meeting this morning. And uh, our packets are online for those of you that are in our viewing audience to feel free to get those off of our website and be able to follow along as well. Um, is there any corrections or additions to our agenda this morning? I would just note that on your desk this morning there was two corrections to the claims sheet that was already in the online packet that Sarah provided yesterday. And those two are? It's on the handout on your desk. Um, one is on page 23 to truck equipment service mounting plate. It changed, she has a note right there that it changed the budget line. And the other one was another budget line that changed from 4260 to 4360, both in the highway department. Okay. Or note one's sheriff, one's highway. Okay. Our consent agenda this morning, our, we have the approval of the minutes, travel education, personnel action, our cellular allowances, and then our health and human services report. Are there any questions or anything regarding the consent agenda? If not, we'll approve it uh, without objection. We'll move on to item number seven, our routine business, which is the approval of the claims. The chair would entertain a motion regarding such uh, for discussion. Moved by Miller, second by Krogman. Um, any questions on any of the claims? Do we have any staff members with us that want to clarify or anything that in regards to any of the claims? If not, please call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Um, we have our agenda uh, with the approval of travel and education requests. The chair would entertain a motion regarding such. Moved by Wyseth, second by second. Miller. I'm um, running so, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, you're correct. You're on I've got to go down one more line, I'm sorry. Action to approve the automatic supplements of the emergency management budget in the amount of $13,049 for grants funds received. Um, chair would entertain a motion. Moved by Krogman. Second. Second by Miller. Um, discussion, Marty, did you have anything you wanted to bring up or any of the staff on regarding this? No, just that that's uh, homeless security money that's going to go towards uh, our new uh, records management uh, program that we're getting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the commissioners? If not, please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carried. Then we have our department head reports, and I'll start on the far end if it's all right. Bev? You. Okay, fine. Joyce from Equalization. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Promise to be shorter than I was last time. So, just a uh, quick mention: the assessment notices were mailed out on Valentine's Day, and we have 16,500 parcels. We printed 10,500 yellow sheets, and we mailed about 8,500 envelopes. So, as the system progresses, the numbers go down, which helps for postage. Uh, hasn't been real busy since we sent them. There's been some questions, some have come in, we've made some appointments, went out and looked at a few, but it's been pretty quiet all in all when you send that kind of mailing out. So we'll see what the next couple weeks bring. I met with the city council on the 18th and discussed what we had changed in Brookings and we discussed local boards. Next week, we will meet with the small towns on Wednesday and we'll be meeting with the townships on Thursday. The last day to file written notice for local boards will be Thursday, March 13th. 
Local boards will be held March 17th through the 21st. And the last day to file written notice to appeal with the county is April 1st. And the county, you guys probably need to discuss when you're going to hold your boards. And I'd like to do a special thank you to Brookings Register for the nice article that helps with public education in the paper last week. So, any questions? Haven't you had anybody just barge in? Not too bad, no, no. That was your chance, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> no. just, those, just those people that didn't understand what I told them the last time I was sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Your report today was a lot easier to understand it, than it, it was, was last week. It was a lot week. easier to understand. <laughs> the, the night that I spoke to the city, we were in the community room, and the room was just packed with people. It was just full. It was almost standing room only. And when it got to be my turn, I said, I've never seen so many people interested in assessments, but I don't think they were there for that. So, <laughs> If no questions, that's... Joyce, when right. are you going to have them set the dates for the... I, I just said they need to work on that, so I don't know. Is there a date range? Stacy? will you be working with them to set them up, or am I supposed to be coordinating that? Well, if they start on April 8th, Tuesday, which is Stacy's school election. April 8th is, yeah, the city and school city election and school. day, so, so I'd like would, to avoid that. She would like to avoid Tuesday, so if they want to do the next Tuesday or on Wednesday, you know, I, I'm, I'm here and I'm flexible, so it's up to the board. I know we were gonna wait and see, but I, we need at least probably a full half a day, irregardless of appointment schedules, so. Okay. Board members, do you have specific dates that are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Commissioner Commissioner Falcon is traveling today, so the week of the eight, that eighth, I am gone after our meeting all that week. Okay. I'm available the next. I'm available the next, you know, two to three days. And, uh, get on the road Friday afternoon for a softball tournament. What about Tuesday the 15th? Right there. Yeah. In the morning. Well, the 8th, no. The 8th. It doesn't, well, that's fine with me. Does that work for you, Tom? What was the date? I'm sorry. The 8th. Uh, Joking April. around calendars here. April what to what? We go from April 8th to the 29th, but we don't want to go that late. <laughs> if you wanted to pencil in the 15th, the you know, the morning or into the afternoon, then we could probably get the appointments in too if you want to do but it in one I morning. think we should look at the morning. Does that work for you? On the Wednesday? No, Tuesday the 15th. Oh, morning only, yes. That's the Passover. Okay, and then you meet again on the 22nd, correct? Right. right. So, then, so then if we had any issues from the 15th appointments, we could get those reviewed and bring them back on the 22nd when you're all here again. Yes. We can meet again as an equalization board. Mm -hmm. So would it be all day on the 15th? No, morning. Just morning. Okay. We, we hope. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going to reserve the room for whole, all day just in case. Oh. It'll be as dark as our tent. Okay. Does that work for commissioners? If we establish 9 a.m. on the 15th? Okay. And on the 8th, um, at your meeting, I can. We should have a really good idea of how many we'll have on the eighth. So, if we needed to go into the afternoon, we okay. could reschedule that. Okay. If that works for everybody. Okay. Is that the only date you need reserved? I think so. We okay. should be able to get it done, and then we can finish up on the twenty-second if we need to. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions? No. Thanks, Joyce. Yep. Vicky. Good morning. Morning, and I put in your packets um, the PT92 report that was sent to the state with 
um, that shows the uncollected taxes from last year. And um, just to kind of give you an idea of what, what is uncollected, not very much. We have 99% collected as of December 31st, except the uh, registered mobile homes, which was at 85%, I believe. And those were the ones that were turned over to the Sheriff's Office for collection for the distress warrants. And um, any questions on anything with a delinquent list? Do you have any idea how we compare to other counties along it's, those lines? It's really about the same. Is it? Uh, pretty much across the board, it's in the 98 to 99. Online, the last year that's published on the um, Department of Revenue website, it's 2009. They haven't gotten the other years on there, but we're pretty, there's a few counties that fall below that, but most of them are right up there. So, so that's good. People are paying their taxes anyway. And to give you an update on House Bill 1179 with the license plates, um, refund that did get deferred to the 41st day, so we don't have to worry about that. So any other questions from anybody? Otherwise, work as usual. Questions, anyone? Thanks, Thank you. Beth. Marty? Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning. First, I just want to report that I saw a robin in my yard, but I was wearing a coat, so I think we're in trouble. Mine has a little earmuffs. Yeah, a little earmuffs and stuff, so I think we got a few more days before uh, spring's coming. Uh, presently, in, in, uh, we have 21 inmates, so it's up a little bit uh, uh, over the last couple weeks. Uh, there's 25 total on 24-7 uh, uh, that come in twice a day, and then I have 21 on the uh, ankle bracelets at the present time. Uh, over the weekend of... Uh, President Day's weekend uh, was the 15th and the 16th. Uh, we had uh, had a kind of a, a bad winter event. Road was pretty, roads were pretty slippery, and, and my guys took over 10 accidents. Uh, in the Highway Patrol, I think they called out extra people, and uh, they were busy in Moody County in that area again. They had multiple cars sliding in the ditch over that uh, that weekend and so forth. Um, uh, Bob Hill and myself were out at the uh, home show on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday, I guess they had over 2,000 come through, and, and on Sunday they had over 1,500. So we had a booth set up and gave out a lot of information between the, the two of us. So it was uh, well well received. So that, that, that was kind of fun. So we'll do that again. Um, also, uh, I, I, we applied for uh, a drug grant uh, through the uh, Attorney General's Office on drug uh, uh, confiscation of, of money and so forth uh, through, uh, you know, if they stop someone on the interstate and there's a money to, and it's associated with drugs, of course they confiscate it. And the agencies have a chance to apply for those funds and we applied and we were awarded $36,000 to upgrade our, our uh, in-vehicle camera systems in all our cars. So that's, uh, that's going to be a real help for us. So. Uh, over the course of uh, probably the last five or six years, the, the Attorney General's Office probably has given us around $60,000 or so from drug uh, or money forfeit, uh, confiscated from, uh, from drug sales uh, in vehicles and stuff. So, so it's helped out a lot. Uh, one year we was able to buy a car with that money for, the, for, the, for our canine. So it, it, that really comes in helpful. Also, our new records management uh, program uh, is, is coming along. Uh, first, they told us that we'd go live with our new software in, in August, but now they're talking May. So uh, we're, we're getting excited, excited for that because I think it's really going to help us. Uh, uh, what we're repeating some things uh, with our present system, and this is going to put everything a little more user friendly. So, mm -hmm. other than that, I guess that's that's all I have. Questions for Marty? It's just perfect timing because we're going to hire a new IT person. <laughs> um, I well, was reading, yeah. and maybe it's perfect timing on one occasion, but I get to lose Rod right now. But, uh. Yeah, no, no, I didn't mean perfect. <laughs> well, let's see, this, he or she is uh, familiar with what you're doing. I mean, going to have a lot under there to worry about and then have this happen at the same time. I was reading in the paper, and, Abby, and uh, Ms. Howard explained uh, this DUI court and drug court 
experimentation program going in the circuit courts and um, I was just wondering if you had an opinion on that or have you heard anything? Is this something that we want to have in Brookings County or on our circuit court district? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess uh, there's I guess there's some pilot cities and I guess we'll just look and see what yeah. how that comes out. Just seemed interesting. It kind of coincides with these articles and I don't know if you've seen them about um, um, down in Vermilion, the city yes. of Vermilion. Yeah. And, uh, that's what the heck's the county's name? Union? What is, what is that county? Uh, Clay County. Clay County. Yeah. Yep. And the sheriff's department and the uh, judges uh, having a new way of handling. Have you read those and have you been approached by the students here they said they are somewhat interested in this uh. no I haven't uh, to my knowledge the police chief or myself haven't been approached but I'm sure we will and and I don't think it's a final deal in Vermilion the state's attorney needs to review it and, and make sure that's going to go along with with uh, their their uh, uh, office and so forth but no I'm interested in that just for the fact is is that um, I think sometimes uh, in the past you know, we were putting second offense <clears throat> underage consumptions in jail, and they were stacking me up on Friday. I'd have as many as 15 for the weekend for uh, underage uh, possession on a second offense. And I don't know if they really, you know, were punished that weekend or not. But uh, I, I, I think with the 24-7, because they were talking about the 24-7 as an alternative, also um, uh, in, in counseling. And I think that that's making them more responsible on that 24-7 because they have to come in twice a day and, and we're going to keep them probably sober during that time. And, and, uh, and, and then I think their record, somehow their record is not, uh, it doesn't go on their record and so forth. So I'm interested in that. And, and I, the, 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 share, or the police chief talked about too is, is just like I, when, they, when you have applications, candidates, if I have two candidates that are applied for a deputy sheriff position, and they're both even, but I have one that had an underage consumption while they were in college. You know, who am I going to go with? I'm probably going to go with the candidate that doesn't have anything on their record. You know, and I, you know, we probably lose a lot of good candidates because they have an underage consumption on their record. So I think this is a good alternative. I, I, I don't know if they were punished when they came to jail because they went up in the, they went upstairs and, and they played cards and they could watch TV and, and I don't know if they were really, it was a, more of a social event on weekends. I, I think the 24-7 and counseling make them more responsible. So I'm interested in that. Uh, I've, I've always been approached before on the, on the Good Samaritan where um, if they're at a party and someone becomes highly intoxicated and they call, uh, if someone calls, they get immune from being prosecuted. You know, that's always fell on the wayside. And I'm not, the way they wrote those bills didn't, I didn't think it was gonna, was gonna work just right. And so the sheriffs, we kind of was against that Samaritan law. And so it's, it's struggle. But this is something different that I think, I think us sheriffs that are in the, in the college towns will, 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 will support uh, something that, that's coming up, but what they're talking in Vermilion, if that makes, if that answers your question, I, I'm going a long way around it, but sure. I'm interested in that because I think, I think the 24/7 makes people responsible coming in, and we keep them sober. You know, if they violate or if they're late and those types of things, they have to spend 48 hours in in jail. You know, even if they're late, give them one free break. The next time they don't have an alarm clock or don't have a way, they find a ride or they get an alarm clock or something. So. <coughs> But I'll be interesting. But the, the state's attorney's got to write on. The state's attorneys are going to have to be on board with those with that too. Okay. Anything else from Marty? Thanks. Good to see you. Um, Dick, do you have something for us today from Highway Department? You got a lot for us a little later. No, no. <laughs> yeah, a lot later. <laughs> um, basically, we just working with the snow and the cold weather and crews have started crack filling uh, with our rubberized crack sealant and uh, we'll start hauling P-Rock to get ready for that in the near future when we get a day or two without snow. And then next week on the 5th and 6th is our annual MSHAW training which is required and we always have two days because there's such a large group that attend in, in the Brookings area and so it also allows us to split up our people. It's mandatory that they go and and uh, if it does snow we can get by with a skeleton crew and go the next day. So 
That's all I have, and unless you have some questions. I don't at this time. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks, and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, Megan, you were here first. Do you have something from community development or um, emergency? Okay. It's always nice to have you with us. Mike from Veteran Services and Welfare. Uh, good morning. Good I morning. just have a real quick uh, thing that came down. And uh, as uh, Commissioner Larson would approach me one time in regards to the uh, high cost of propane at this time, I just wanted you to know that uh, low income energy assistance program, recognizing the shortage and how much the cost has went up, have, um, have approved another plan if their uh, LEAP, if their remaining LEAP is less than $400 and they have less than 20% uh, remaining in their propane tank, and they own their own propane tank, that the uh, LEAP will be filling at one additional time so that uh, we can get that up because of the recognition of the higher cost and the propane costs. They have yes. to own the tank? They can't be renting it from? According to this, it says about it being uh, owning their own tank, and I'm not sure how that fits into it other than to... Uh, um, since it goes through the end of, of March, the program, and unless it's just to make sure that they have, uh, you know, the propane stays with them so that they don't necessarily move on and not have the, the protein. Propane's like different than like MDU, you know, the, the natural gas and everything, because you actually get the gas before you use it. And I think what they're trying to do is not have someone fill up their tank and then end up moving to another spot. Because once you get your your low-income energy assistance grant for that particular uh, residence, it doesn't always move with you, and especially with the propane. But they could move away from this location and leave their own tank there and probably make it part of a sale or if they had anything to Correct. sell. I mean, it doesn't make I think a lot of people rent tanks. It just seems like it's going to exclude a lot of people. Um, and I mean, this is not our money to be bossing around, but I guess I would question it. Um, and, and I did find that kind of interesting that this particular one, it has to be that they own their tank. So I guess if we, we do not, uh, our office doesn't do the low income energy assistance program. We, we do assist people with filling out the paperwork, especially if they come in and, you know, they come in and they go, Mike, I'm behind, they're shutting off my MDU bill, you know, and then we will, we will go through and, and um, I have two contacts in peer that basically we fill out the thing and we email it to them right away, scan it in and email it to them so that they can get the process done within 24 hours to avoid a shutoff. Uh, but that's pretty much the extent of our involvement. I actually don't even know what people get for grant amounts. I have actually no clue what the full amount of a, of a low income energy grant would be. I agree with you that renting a tank is pretty, pretty common. You know, and. Uh, it doesn't seem right, but then we didn't write the rules of the regulations. But and I can check a little bit more into yeah. it. But that's what what came down is is that they just said that that they um, who have their own propane. Well, maybe it's just they have to have their own propane tank and not a community one. That could be too. After I, I just see own. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I guess there's more than one way of using that word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Mike, you and I talked one day, and, and oftentimes with, I guess you'd call it the welfare department if you wish, um, every once in a while there's, there's a bit of brightness in it in the fact that we're there to help people that hit a bump in the road, and you were relating to the individual that come in that really needed assistance, and then you want to relate to the board and to the public that there are good things happening where this individual came in once they got their paycheck. Remember that one? I'm trying to remember, because we do have a number of those happen that people would come in, they need until Friday. Uh, this might be one of those. So they'll need until Friday, it's Tuesday. Um, and, and the utility companies have certain guidelines. And um, most of the utility companies we deal with here are, are, are um, say, private utility companies that don't have the same guidelines as other ones. I have to say this for Brookings Municipal Utilities, they work very well with us and uh, they're fantastic to work with. Uh, when we 
when we have an issue, even if we're not able to get it onto the next uh, commission meeting for approval, they will work with us on that. Uh, sometimes we just we just need to do is is, is hold them off for four or five days. Uh, we've had cases where, you know, uh, before we even got the check to the utility company, the person's come in to pay us back when we haven't even uh, uh, gotten the check to them, and then we just send them automatically to the utility company. But it, it keeps the lights on, and between the low-income energy assistance and uh, our working, especially with Brookings Utilities, it's, it's, I think it's been a very good system, and I think it's saved a lot of our residents a lot. So it does make you feel good that what we're doing with this program helps a lot of people. And the one you were referring to was a gentleman that it was bitter cold. They had to have fuel. They qualified. He got, Mike got everything, got the vendor involved, and, and everything was in process to help. In the meantime, the, the individual got their paycheck, and they came in to Mike with a check to, to pay it. And uh, so it makes you feel good that that you've got programs out there that that help a lot of good people that it isn't just a a giveaway type thing so very good. it's good to know that thank you anything else mike any questions for mike if not thank you i don't think we got all our department heads that are yes, here I'll, I'll catch you in a, uh, we actually have are you're with WIC, correct um, we have you on on an agenda item, and I was I'll do our finance report, and then I want to get to you, and I want to ask the board if it's okay if we take care of your business all at once, okay? So you don't have to sit through a whole litany of of uh, contracts for our highway department. Stacy, with the finance office. The finance office report now for January. I do believe this is. Yep, yeah, was in your packets. Um, one question we've been doing over the past couple of years, we've been doing the quarterly transfers from the general fund. Uh, last couple of years, it's just been to highway. This year, we have money budgeted to go to highway and I believe, what is it, emergency, emergency management. Um, typically, what we would do is take action on those quarterly to send a quarter of the money over to those funds um, throughout the year. Is that how you wish? I'm guessing I'm looking for direction from you if that's how you want to continue to do that or if, there, if we know that there's an expenditure that we're going to um, be needing that money in there sooner rather than later. I guess I'm looking for direction from you if that you want to continue to do the transfers quarterly with the quarter, quarterly amounts. Has there been any problem doing it that way? No. I see no reason why we couldn't continue to do it that way. Is, is quarterly agreeable with your department? Does it fit? It's, yep, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I guess I'm just, I don't want to continue doing something if we need the, all of the money there at the beginning of the year. I don't want, you know, it's, it's there, it's budgeted for, it can go at any time. But you can also have the option if you wait, you don't have to do the transfer towards the end of the year either if that budget's looking like it's not going to need it either. It doesn't need to be transferred. So there's benefits. You know, if you need the money, it's there. You can do it. If you want to hold off and just do the quarterly transfers and look at it again towards, you know, that last quarter, you can. But instead of just doing the same thing over and over, I thought I'd get some direction from you folks if you want to do something differently, I guess. I haven't been around a lot enough, so I'm looking for these two and to see if we got a problem. I mean, otherwise, I don't. You know, I I don't know why we'd have to do it all right at the beginning when we typically don't. I guess my suggestion would be just to have the finance office manor, um, monitor the cash balances of those accounts. The only one that would probably be a question because it doesn't have routinely cash sitting in there would be emergency management, because you know we've been spending down the cash the last couple of years. Um, but still, I would think that they're fine right here at the beginning. And if you, you know, if the, if the county needs more at the second quarter, instead of doing it quarterly, doing the rest, you know, if they see there's a, it's getting close, they can um, suggest that you do more the next time. Okay. Highway has sufficient cash sitting in the fund anyway, so you're not going to ever have a problem with that budget. Okay. So do we need a motion or general consensus? I think 
I think consensus. Okay. Okay. Quarterly. Quarterly, all right, with everyone. Okay. However, we do need action to do the quarterly transfer. <laughs> consensus on how to do it, fine, but we do need the action to do it. So that would take a motion from this board yes. to do the quarterly. And, and I just want to be sure that, that from an operational standpoint, the quarterly is, is staff friendly. Yes, okay. it's fine. Yep. Okay. I'll move to approve the transfers to the highway, road and bridge, and the emergency management quarterly. Quarterly. Okay, moved by Miller, second by Wyseth. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And then as far as the rest of the report, it's the, um, the be it noted items that are there each month. Um, the auditor's account with the treasurer, payroll and additives, totals, highway expenditure adjustments, and the register of deeds statement of fees is also included. Or if there's any other questions, we can discuss that. Any questions from any board members? I know as we go through this budget, there's lots of figures, and after a while going through the packet, your head is just swimming in numbers and you're trying to. Okay. Nothing else, Stace? No. Okay, thank you very much. Now, as we move forward with our scheduled agenda items, and if it's all right with the board, um, we do have an action item with, with our uh, WIC report. Feel free to come up, if it's okay with the board, that at the same time we have her here, if there's any questions, that it would be uh, item J. If we could take care of that, she wouldn't have to uh, sit and wait for any questions as we go through all of the highway numbers. So at this time, introduce your, if, is that all right with the board? Yes. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, we're anxious to hear your report, and then we'll uh, move on your action item, too. All right, good morning. I'm Jenny. I'm one of the two nurses with the Department of Health, Community Health here in Brookings. Um, our Wicket program is computerized. We're up and running. We've had a couple of Wicket update calls, so it's been nice. Um, we've seen some efficiency with it. We've been able to get more appointments in um, sooner than we were before, so that's been nice. Um, we're also, our dietitian is also holding nutrition counseling classes, which is um, for a certain amount of clients that they can meet with a dietitian and a group of the new clients, and they um, discuss a certain topic. So they learn stuff from the dietitian along with the peers that are in that group. Um, we also attended our first meeting with the Brookings Hospital regarding their um, baby friendly breastfeeding initiative that they're going towards so um, and that's just bringing breastfeeding with the evidence-based research down to that community level so being involved with that has been kind of fun um, as far as flu clinics we're still um, giving flu shots in the clinics um, we had that pod exercise back in October and that went well um, we gave um, 106 flu shots to children and then we did our big SDSU clinics. We've done a couple school clinics. Um, we've given over 2,500 flu vaccines so far. So it's been a pretty good, pretty good year. Um, as far as our school services, we're, we continued. The, we started those kind of in September. We did a couple, and then we started up here again in January. So we do kind of about one or two schools every one or two weeks. So we're getting those done earlier in the year this year too. So. Okay. <coughs> Any, Any questions? questions? You know, for a, for a government program, the WIC, which means Women, Infant, and Children, that's been one of the most successful programs that's it's been around for a long, long time, and it's, it has really served the public well. And you people do a good job of managing and maintaining the program. Thank you. Don, With, can, can yes. we just let her know the agreement that Don is referring to is we got from the state the amendment to give the additional funds for the WIC, WIC hours and the office she might not be aware that that's the agreement that that oh. we received okay. yeah <laughs> I know what he was referring to okay that's that's why I was going if there was any questions <laughs> which you probably couldn't have answered <laughs> and I didn't mean to be rude to you no, but I want to okay. take care of all of your business before we got into yep. this lengthy uh, that's okay. uh, annual bid award thing mm -hmm. so uh, 
fellow commissioners, uh, we would move then to action item number, uh, agenda item J, which is the uh, action to approve the agreement 14-6, uh, which is the amendment to the WIC contract. The chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by Miller. Second. Second by Wyseth. Is there any discussion? This is just amending the original agreement that we had with the state. It's providing for some additional dollars for the WIC hours in the office. So we're happy to see that. We've had that happen a couple different times where after they see the caseload going through the office, they send an amendment to give us additional state funds to support the secretarial staff in the office. Yep. So we're happy when we see those. Okay. No further discussion. Please call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. You're free and clear. All right. Thank you thank so much. Thank you very much yep. and uh, keep up the good work. All right. Thank you. Okay. As we continue on with our regular business, the next item is the action to approve agreement 1411, which is the MOU memorandum of understanding between SDSU and Brookings County. Um, chair would enter for discussion. Chair would entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Moved by Miller. Is there a second? Second. Second by Krogman. Discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes, ma'am. Um, I think the reason that the MOU was written the way that it was initially with no dollar figure was because they send that same MOU out to everybody and they were looking maybe to make it more than a yearly contract to make it. That's why they didn't put a figure in there. Um, and, but I, I think it's fine that we do put that in, but then is it our understanding, if we're gonna put the figure in, we have to do this yearly then because it will change. Correct. So that has to be our understanding. One Any thing, other discussion? Yes, oh, One thing Commissioner Larson pointed out to me, um, last week the discussion focused around adding that up to 20 hours a week, but we should really have that say 19.5. We've always limited it at that so that they don't qualify for South Dakota retirement because if they're at 20 hours, we have to put them on the retirement system. And I just missed that during the discussion last year. So I inserted it the way the board discussed, but I think you should probably amend that to say 19.5. Okay. Someone want to move so to amend the motion to read? I'll make a motion. Moved by uh, Krogman, second, second by Wyseth. And for clarification, the amendment speaks to uh, the paragraph under personnel and financial, and that would change up to 20 hours per week to read up to 19.5 hours per week. Any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, call the roll on the amendment. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Now we, come, now we come to the memorandum, the motion on the memorandum as amended. Any, yes? I think we also need to point out that at the last meeting, the board requested that I have the deputy state's attorney review the MOU for any other contradictory type language within the MOU. There were two items that she suggested changes to, um, which would be in the first line. I showed that in red um, before. I don't have the original in front of me, but I believe it used to say sufficient and adequate to all parties of the agreement. Um, Abby felt that this was clear for um, our purposes and then also down here where it said it used to say county auditor we updated it to say county finance officer correct and I want to thank our uh, uh, state's attorney staff um, for uh, reviewing this for us and uh, deputy state's attorney Abigail Howard do you have any comments that you'd like to make prior to the vote for our discussion purposes nope I reviewed it in detail after the last meeting and Stephanie had indicated to me you all requested that I look over it and we discussed some of the changes and I'm comfortable with it as presented today. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the part of the board? Uh, are we gonna, I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendments that Ms. Howard, Ms. Howard worked on. <coughs> Is, <let's> okay. <laughs> that was included in the document. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that was, that, those That's right. were included. There, it's already in, in there. <laughs> Never mind. sorry. Yeah, they're already in there. Any further discussion on the main motion as amended? Hearing none, please call the roll. 
Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item number B is presentation of the 2013 uh, Register of Deeds Annual Report. Good morning, Bev. Good morning. Always good to see you. Bev, for our, for our viewing audience, maybe if you'd pull the mic down a little bit in front of you so everybody can hear. Okay, thanks. Okay, I see on the, the screen that we have the, the uh, spreadsheet for my uh, 2013 annual report for the Registered Deeds Office. And on the um, column titled Total, uh, the first line there is uh, the transfer fees that, that we had. And um, they numbered $144,620.50. Now, as a, a little refresher course for the, for the board and for the public, um, transfer fees are what we collect on any deed that is recorded with us that has a purchase price. And that's based on a dollar per thousand of that purchase price. Uh, the general fee is $194,014. And that is all the recording filing fees um, for each document at a $30 flat fee per document. It also, that figure also includes um, the UCC filing fees, which um, is t uh, between 25 and 35, depending upon the document itself. The next one is uh, marriage licenses, and we collected $9,960 for the marriage licenses in 2013. Uh, the next line is certified copies. That's the birth, marriage, and death uh, vital record certified copies. And that was $45,915. And then the copies and disk. Um, the copies and disk include um, any just general uh, copies that the public may, be, may need personally. Also, the disk is what Dakota Abstract obtains from us for $350 a month, and that is every document for the month that is, is brought in. Um, so for the, the total that our office generated, it was $399,218.50. And after that, the, like the second section is uh, the general fees broken down into the filing fees and the financing statements. Um, then the next one is the general fees with that tech fee that came into law in July of 2012. With those um, taken out, the state receives, um, the tech fee is first off, $5 per document that is recorded and the state uh, receives two dollars of that five and the county receives three dollars of that five dollars um, so it shows here that the state received eleven thousand eight hundred and four dollars from our office and we uh, as the county got seventeen thousand seven hundred and six dollars uh, once a year in August um, the South Dakota County Officials Association whom we remit that money to each month um, divides all the money that they have received in that year and so and evenly distributes it back to the registered deeds office in the in the counties of South Dakota and this year um, in August of 13 was the first that this was dis distributed then we did receive five thousand six hundred and forty three dollars and forty two cents from that The next section is the certified copies, which again is the birth, death, and marriage um, certified copies. That's $15, they cost $15 each. And um, we received $45,915 for that. And somewhere on my sheet I've got where or how many that is, but divide that by 15 and we'll figure it out. <laughs> I've, um, the county keeps five dollars of that, and that's um, broken down the next section of the birth and death, I should say, and we keep all of the marriage. Uh, and then the state receives ten dollars of the birth and death fee, and that is uh, again broken down in the next two sections. Then the marriage license, um, we received nine thousand nine hundred sixty dollars in marriage licenses. They cost forty dollars each. 
when they are purchased. And of that, um, the county keeps $10. And then $30 is uh, given to our local uh, domestic abuse shelter. So that's broken down in that section. The last, I just did a, a just to show in the last section what actually stays in the county with, um, with taking out what goes to the state and, and that type of thing. So actually um, three, $355,294.50 stayed in the county from what was generated in the Registered Deeds Office. Um, I've got another comparison sheet. Um, Stephanie, do you have that of the, of the 2013 and 2012? There. Um, that shows just what was generated in 2012 comparing to 2013. We had uh, $12,106.50 increase in 13. Um, and as you can see, some of the, the categories were a little less, some were a little more. We did go down 14,000 in transfer fees, but also I have a comparison sheet of the number of documents that was brought in and um, we did have 100 less deeds, so that would make for the less transfer fee, of course. Any questions? I had, I had a question, just a point of clarification on the, the $30 that goes to domestic abuse. Is that per statute or? Yes. That's, uh, I thought it was, but yeah. I had a, the question was asked to me and I wasn't 100% sure and I, I thought it was, but. Yes. And that, yeah, per statute, so it's across the state, mm -hmm. of course. Any questions for our Register of Deeds? A very easy report to review, and it was well <laughs> explained, and I want to thank you for all of the fine compliments that we get in the fine, about your department and the job that you're doing. Well, Thanks, thank you. Deb. That's good to hear. I have a very good staff. I must pass that on to them, because without... Without their help, I, the office wouldn't run as smoothly. But thank you. I did have one thing, just since I didn't come to the department head report, um, just to keep you up to date. I, I am working on trying to get a credit card, um, to be able to pay with credit card on, in our office. And um, well, kind of to backtrack, last fall, when the state auditor audited our office, he made the comment that he had not seen a register of deeds that had for checking accounts. Well, that was how it was when I started back in 98, and I just, I never questioned it, I never visited with anybody about it until he made that comment, and so I did question him on that then. And um, we had a checking account for general fees, one for transfer fees and vital records together, which is the certified copies, and one for marriage licenses, and then we have an IRS account that they um, is automatic deposit from IRS when we do filing of IRS or federal tax liens. And he, he had not seen that. Well, with the onset of thinking of doing a credit card and that, I've decided it was easier to consolidate that. So I did at the first of the year um, after December was, was balanced and I didn't have any monies in there from anything other than, you know, no money because <laughs> it was all balanced out. I did close um, the, the one account um, and I do plan to, I'm going to visit with the credit card company which is easier to have if I should keep open um, one of the accounts to just have deposits from the credit card um, per, you know, transactions or if that would be easier to have that all into the one. I want to keep the IRS one because that's just automatically deposited from them and then we've got them completely separate, you know. Um, but I've, that's kind of what's going on in, in the office. Um, I have visited with the vital records in peer with the Department of Health there and um, they need to, um, to approve the credit card uh, vendor that we go with because it has to be secure because if you get vital records has um, personal information that it needs to be a secure um, <coughs> site. So um, that's what I'm working on and 
like I said, I did close one of the, the accounts and just wanted to let you know that. Okay? Any questions? Well, okay. Everybody, I guess, um, on credit cards. Do we accept credit cards? Huh? Only the finance office. Finance Only office. finance, okay. Yeah. And then in the spending, um, do most of our departments use credit cards? We have three or four credit cards available to check out for all departments. And then our office goes through and verifies the receipts with the statements and then the finance officer pays them so that there are checks, I guess. Okay. There, as far as us accepting credit cards, there's some other and Vicki can explain it, requirements on government where we can't pay convenience fees or something like that, so we have to charge that back to the customer, so it's kind of complicated. They can explain that better than I can. Okay, well, just in the, just curiosity is that um, the school district went to credit cards, and then they were able to get it all breaked out, broken down. They found a company that specializes in schools, and if you have a Discover card, you know, you get cash back. Holy buckets, when you run all the uh, school district things through credit cards, you should see the money we get back. And it was a special credit card, went through a company, and we dealt with the local banks, but they said, you, we can't touch this deal. But it was a company in Illinois that specialized in school district credit cards. We tried to look for that too for counties. I believe, oops, I believe Don was communicating with someone at NACO to try to get that option available for counties. This is deja vu it, all yep. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think uh, they're going to have something um, before long that counties can subscribe to like you did at the school. And then that will give us a lot more flexibility and it's a changing times. Uh, you know, right, we had people, a lot People more use inquiries. it for convenience. You know. Right, um, and I did kind of do a poll with the customers that came in because like Stephanie said, uh, as the county we can't, we have to charge the finance fee above and beyond what our our fee is for the, the document or the and it's um, I believe two dollars and fifty cents that um, this it's called vital check the, the credit card company that um, vital records approves of and um, so I did kind of a poll of the customers that came in that had to run to the ATM and get uh, cash because they didn't have a check blank along or or cash and just had their cards you know and um, it was pretty much that they would gladly pay the 250 instead of having to run to find cash or carry their checkbook along. So that's kind of why I decided it's time to move on to this. <laughs> yeah, and, and I applaud your thinking, uh, you know, and you're trying to stay with what the, what the customer uh, wants, A little convenience you know, in regards to the payment. So. But uh, hopefully, before long, we'll have have a program that will work and it will fit all of us and it will it will fit our customers too. Right. So, okay. Any other questions for Bev? And just to clarify, too, the payments with the credit cards versus the accepting of the credit cards are are even another whole different ball game. And we are still researching or trying to get a way to accept the payments online through our website um, with our IT guy <coughs> leaving it'll probably be a delay now a little bit on that but we did have two vendors that would be able to do that so if you ever move into the e-filing if you're already right. accepting credit cards that would help ease that transition as well right and um, you bring that up Stephanie the e-filing that is in the legislature now the bill for e-filing and um, can we um, I, I got a, a, a little map here of the United States with the, um, okay, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we are. There we go. Okay, there's the, the map of the United States with the color coded. The, um, the states that are in red, over 50% of the population use e-filing, which is receiving documents um, via the email during over a secured site again. The green states, Arizona and Colorado, 100% of the population, and the white states don't accept e-filing. And notice South Dakota, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is in the legislature and it's looking, looking very positive that we will be um, accepting that after the 1st of July, so. 
Okay. Well, there's Mississippi. They're always right there. Yeah, teacher they're right pay. there. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, there are uh, seven, seven that don't accept, I believe. But I think South Dakota really right in the middle there. Just kind of uh, all the red states kind of sticks out there. So. Okay. Thank you for reminding me of well, that, Stephanie. Well, <laughs> as she did point out something, there's the customer's credit card, and then we're the customer right. credit card, and and I go buy my license, fishing license, I got to kick up 250 and I think the state legislature ought to look at that. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it would be, ex like you say, the customer would accept it in what, some kind of a handling credit card fee thing, service charge. I mean, everybody would accept it. Well, again, with vital records with the state, they've been working on trying to find something that is real secure for the, for the privacy um, issues for the for the people that are getting the vital records it has, a, you know, all your personal information on. So. Okay. Yeah, everything done online. I, I get my uh, hunting and fishing license online, and I was having, for some reason, trouble with my printer, and I kept trying and trying and trying, and a couple days later, I come into the office, and here's this great big stack of paper, and I got about 50 copies of my license. <laughs> I got plenty of copies of my hunting and fishing license for this year. Okay, thanks, Bev. Appreciate it very much. Welcome. Okay, item number C under our regular business is action to approve the agreement uh, 1412, which is a right of way application made by Sioux Valley Energy to occupy 214th Street for electrical distribution. Um, all the information was in our packet, and I'm sure we've all looked them over, and most of this is, is quite routine. Uh, we have uh, several of them. So, uh, but we do have to take them individually. So at this time, the chair would uh, entertain a motion to approve agreement 14-12 with Sioux Valley Energy. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Miller, second by Wyseth. Discussion? Please call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Action item D is agreement 1413 uh, with Sioux Valley Energy to occupy 464th Avenue for so electrical distribution. Moved by so Wyseth, second, second by Krogman. Please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Item E is action on agreement 1414 with Sioux Valley Energy to occupy 204th Street. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Miller, second by Krogman. Please call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And item number F is action on agreement 1415 uh, with Sioux Valley Energy to occupy 201st Street for electrical distribution. So moved. Moved by Krogman. Second. Second by Miller. Please call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, uh, Dick, for the, for the purposes of our viewing audience, uh, do you want to take the center seat because I think we're on to some of your, your items now. And we'll ask Dick Burke, our highway superintendent, to uh, come forward in case anyone has any questions. Um, everything is in our packet and it's pretty self-explanatory and well explained in there, Dick, but action item number G is to approve resolution 1410, and that's authorizing the purchase of our corrugated metal pipe, bridge materials, the greater blades, and this is uh, on the prices established by the County of Beadle, South Dakota's bid process. Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Wysa, second Krogman. Discussion? Please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wysa? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Item number H, maybe, is uh, to approve the 2014 highway bids. And uh, I guess uh, we will take them one at a time. And uh, the first one is to award bid number one for concrete uh, culvert deck. And uh, this is with Centrex Products of Rapid City. Chair would entertain the motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Krogman, second by Miller. Please call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. 
Next one is action to award bid number two for road oil and the low bid on all items was with Flint Hills Resources of Marshall, Minnesota. So Move to approve. Second. Moved by Miller, second by uh, Krogman. Please call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Bid number three is the rubberized crack filling material and the low bid on uh, items listed to Mid-States Equipment and Supply of Mountain Lake, Minnesota and Brock White Construction Material of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Chair would entertain the motion. So moved. Moved by Wyseth. Second. Second Krogman. Call the roll please. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Bid number four is to award the bid for P Rock. Uh, and the low bid on all of those items to LG Everest Company of Sioux Falls. Please so move. Moved by Wyseth, second by Krogman. Call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Bid five is for our bituminous uh, hot mix. Uh, low bids to Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota. Chair to entertain the motion. So moved. Second. Move Miller, second Krogman. Call the roll. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Bid six is the uh, award the bid for crushed gravel, and uh, that low bid uh, goes to Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota, Sturzing, Sturzinger Construction of Elkton, South Dakota, and also of Sturzinger Crushing of Totten, Minnesota. Purpose of discussion, Chair would entertain a motion. So? Second. Moved by Wyseth, second by Miller. Uh, at this point, um, Dick, I'll add, for the, for the benefit of our audience, uh, because we we're, have got a low bid and we're, we're uh, allow, uh, authorizing that bid to three different contract or, or two different contractors and one of them's got two different locations, do you want to quickly explain for our viewing audience what that means? Basically, that's so that if we're doing work in that area of the county where that pit is located, it allows us to get that and you don't have the transportation costs involved like you would if you would have hauled it strictly from the one site. Correct. And, and what they are is we're, we're accepting the lowest responsible bid in each project in that regard. So, But just for our viewing audience, they understand that we can award the bid to more than one. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Bid number seven, be awarded to, for screen gravel, and the, those items listed uh, would go to Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota, and Johnson Brothers Excavation of Madison. Chair would entertain the motion. So moved. Mary Wyseth, second. Krogman, please call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And bid number eight uh, is to award the bids uh, for equipment rental to low bid on all items listed from Mr. Uh, V.J. Allers of Brookings, Bose Construction of Brookings, Butler Machinery of Sioux Falls, and Sturzinger Construction of Elkton, South Dakota. So moved. Moved by Miller. Second. Second by Krogman. Please call the roll. Wysa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We move on, we get into uh, uh, agenda item I, and this is the action to approve the purchase agreements for the annual highway bid awards. And uh, agreement number 14-7 uh, is between Brookings County and uh, Cretex Concrete Products of Rapid City, South Dakota. Chair would entertain the motion. So moved. Moved by Krogman, second by Miller. I heard you, okay. <laughs> Please call the roll. <laughs> Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion yeah, carries. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then agreement 14-8 is agreement between Brookings County and Flint Hills of Marshall, Minnesota. Chair would entertain the motion. So moved. Wyseth? Second. Krogman? Please call the roll. Hold on just a second here. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Agreement 1419 is our agreement between Brookings County and Mid-States <coughs> Equipment of Mountain Lake, Minnesota. So moved. 
Second. Moved by Miller, second by Krogman. Call the roll. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And Dick, if you have any explanation on any of these agreements, feel free to oh, okay. jump in. Okay, agreement number 1420 is between Brookings County and Brock White of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Krogman and Miller. Please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Weissa? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carried. Agreement 1421 is between Brookings County and LG Everest Corporation of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So moved by Weissa, Second. second by Krogman. Call the roll. Miller? Aye. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Agreement 1422 is between Brookings County and Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota. So moved. Second. Moved by Miller, second Krogman. Call the roll, please. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. 1423 is an agreement between Brookings County and Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota. Move Weissa, second, second Krogman. Please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Weissa? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Agreement 1424 between Brookings County and Sturzinger Crushing of Totten, Minnesota. So moved. Second. Move Krogman, second Miller. Call the roll, please. Miller? Aye. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Agreement 1425 is between Brookings County and Sturzinger Construction of Elkton, South Dakota. So moved. Move Krogman. Second. Second Miller. Call the roll, please. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Agreement 1426 is between Brookings County and Johnson Brothers of Madison, South Dakota. So moved. Second. Moved by Weissa, second by Krogman. Call the roll, please. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Weissa? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And 1427 agreement is between Brookings County and Bose Construction of Brookings, South Dakota. So moved. Second. Miller moved, second by Krogman. Call the roll. Miller. Aye. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And item uh, J we have already taken care of. Moving on then uh, to item number K. And this is uh, uh, action to approve changes to the Brookings County Employee POP Fund policy and that's all well explained in our packet. Chair would entertain a motion. So. Moved second. by Weissa, second by Miller. Discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Weissa? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Action uh, I, number L uh, on our agenda is action to request to fill vacancies, and we'll take uh, the first one, which is the request to hire temporary staff in the commission department due to FMLA absence. Um, it's uh, well explained in our packet as well, but uh, for discussion purposes, the chair would entertain a motion. So moved. Moved by Krogman. Second. Second by Miller. Do we have any uh, further explanation needed by staff, or do you want to clarify anything at this point? Our intent would be to hire, hire a temporary employee through availability that would assist in cleaning the highway department, and then our existing staff would fill in um, with some of the other duties at the sheriff's office and the sheriff said that they could actually have some of the correctional officers help with some of the cell work. So we probably wouldn't be, um, it would probably be half of what the normal hours the employee would have been working, um, but we can't have our existing employee do all of it. Right. I think everyone understands what we're doing, that we just, in the absence, for medical leave right. with one of our employees, we need to get the work done. So, And I won't, uh, I put a range of time in there between six to 12 weeks because yeah. it all depends on recovery. Yeah. Okay, any other questions, commissioners? Please call the roll. Krogman? Aye. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. And the next item, uh, under uh, our vacancies is a request to fill a vacancy uh, IT support specialist in the commission department uh, for discussion. The chair would entertain a motion. So, so second. 
Moved by Crowman, second by Wyseth. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Um, just as background for a couple of the, well, for the newer commissioners, because this is a question I was asked um, about having the position on staff versus consulting. And I just wanted to make the full board aware that in the past we did do that with a outside agency. And what we found is now that we are up to multiple servers, seven or eight servers, and with our complicated network connections between the highway and the sheriff and the help desk support needed in our countywide software programs, we just find it necessary that the person is on staff so that we have more say and control over when our needs are being met. Um, we do already do some cross training in our department of some of those uh, duties and we have been meeting, we met last week, we're meeting again this afternoon to go over some of the open items and make sure one of us knows um, on an interim basis, how to address kind of those emergency needs that come up. Um, I guess that's, unless I can answer some additional questions, I did do a comparison of the wage to like the city of Brookings and a couple other ones locally were still competitive, which we saw that in the market analysis. We did it during budget year anyway. So I think that we're fine with the posting. Oh, I would request, I don't know if I, I didn't put this on here. Um, because this is a highly skilled position, I would like to also have permission to advertise the starting range from the minimum to the midpoint based on experience, then I would come back with anything beyond the minimum for board approval. But I would like to be able to advertise it as that, so hopefully we can draw in someone with a little more, you know, if they have five or six years of experience, we can um, accommodate that within our wage range. Is that by consensus agreeable with the board? Yes. Um, for those of you that weren't here when we, when we embarked on this whole process, uh, it, is, it is really um, a position that saves the county a lot of money and uh, anytime you have IT issues, if you don't have someone on staff that can immediately take care of it, you're, you're uh, depending on a vendor that you call and you have to fit their schedule when you get the service and sometimes your, your system can be down or a portion of your system can be down. And, and you, you can't wait that half a day or a day for, uh, for someone to get there to uh, resolve the issues. So uh, the other thing I would say is uh, we're, our uh, employee was an excellent employee and uh, that's the kind of staff that we like to hire and this person was recognized uh, and was given an opportunity to very uh, 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 greatly enhance their overall career and it's a career opportunity that uh, any one of us in that same situation would have accepted. And uh, I want to thank that employee for the great job that they've done and our staff for hiring good people. And I'm confident that uh, the replacement will be somebody of equal quality. I would just like to reiterate and say it's with great sadness that we watch him walk away from us because he has been very, very good. He has promised to not try to break into our system for a couple months after we hire a new guy so we can get a new guy on. I said, you got to give us a couple months to at least get adjusted. So. I always tell Stephanie, it, it, that's the kind of employee you want that you worry all the time that somebody else is going to recognize their abilities and they're going to give them an opportunity to advance their career. But that's, that's what it's all about. And uh, I'm very happy for the employee. Hate to see the individual leave our service, but uh, I'm sure that uh, Stephanie and the Human Resource Department will find us a, a good replacement. Okay. If there are no further discussion. Tom, did no, you have we'll, a discussion? We'll okay. Please call the roll. Miller? Aye. Wyseth? Aye. Krogman? Aye. Larson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item number 10, we move on to the Commission Assistant Report. And we have those, but Stephanie, if you want yeah. to uh, go over any of those items, uh, I do want to just beyond about what's in print. Why feel free to do only so. go beyond what's in print. Okay. Um, well, I don't have anything else to report then. I guess um, I. The Cheeseman Foundation has suggested that the board members all, they only received one response to those final follow-up questions emailed into them. Um, the board thought it would, or the board, 
Cheeseman Foundation thought it would be um, helpful to them in preparing their final report if they could get those questions answered by all the county commissioners so that they can use that to kind of help formulate their final report. Um, we have those available on our website, so if you, uh, I'll email them out to all of you, and then if you guys could complete those questions, and then we'll send them back to them for them to use in their final report preparation. Uh, I'm not going to report on any of my stuff because Don told me not to. We've been busy on our in our department trying to prepare for Ron's leave, so really IT has kind of taken um, a priority to most everything that we're doing in the office right now, trying to make sure we have a handle on everything. Um, on your desk this morning, I passed out uh, the results of the poll on a work session with the extension board. As you can see, there was not a date that worked for everybody. Um, the two dates that had the majority of people was either Thursday the 13th and Thursday the 20th. Thursday the 20th might not be great though because you guys are getting back from Pier and I didn't think about that when I added that date on. The 13th had everybody but one of the extension, well, of those that responded except for an extension board member and your educator, your extension educator or 4-H advisor. Um, so I would assume that you really want her present too. So I don't know if you guys want to give me some other suggestions for dates or if you just want to forego this or give me some direction on how to proceed. Comments from the board? Well, I'll just throw something out, I guess. Just to, Pardon? I'll throw something out. Okay. Is that, yeah, I think it's pretty important that Sonia's there. It's going to be tough for some of these other, uh, is that, and, and I've already talked to you guys a little bit, and I'm going to, during my uh, commission report, visit on this, but I'm just wondering if we shouldn't include the university in this uh, to really do a summit on what we really wanted to accomplish that we didn't accomplish um, we invite the university and uh, into this conversation and uh, so okay. we want to expand it and and she is really part of that university situation so I don't know if we should I'm willing to wait but you know it's, a little into April as far as that goes to get this thing right um, so a bigger doodle or whatever that thing is <laughs> do or whatever it is to um, get okay. all the players in one place so what you need what you're asking is a little more time to think about it pardon you're looking for a little more time no, to think I'm about it to extend get it into more, April I'm trying to get it so we got a bigger chance of having more participants so. okay. and another thing to throw on this discussion that you guys are going to have about scheduling this work session is at the last meeting you also had discussion about inviting them to be or 4-H or Sonia to participate I don't know on what level with our your strategic planning day that you have set for March 25th so is this something you want to occur before March 25th or are you still wanting to invite 4-H into that on the 25th, or are you going to see it separate and distinct by having these work sessions with SDSU and Extension where maybe then they won't need this to be part of the strategic planning session? I just want to make sure that something isn't getting left off because if you want whatever you're going to discuss with the Extension Board to be available to you during the strategic planning that's set for March 25th, you might want to ensure we try to do it before that. I don't know. That was my thought that we would be able to meet with them, try to get this figured out and incorporate them into our strategic planning um, because you know we've got an issue down the road here of uh, space and uh, I think that'll be a you know part of our strategic planning down the road so I'd like to have this discussion prior to that if we can but mm -hmm. well I'm not I'm a big meeting fan but maybe we to say these words have another one and Sonia comes with the university people and that could maybe even be during the daytime because um, that's their job is 4-H or extension and so maybe uh, let's see the 13th maybe we stick with the 13th at 7 to have most of those people 
and uh, let's see, uh, 13th and, and the 11th, maybe, um, uh, if we have, a, have them come to our meeting on the a regular commission have the university and Sonia come and have a discussion with them about how they want to work with us and whatever. And since Sonia is part of the university and then we'd have their input, so some suggestions and different things and, and then we did take that to the next meeting with the extension board. Just, just throwing it. I think we would need to check that out with Sonia and see if she if that will fit into her schedule, well, you know, and s yeah. Yeah. But not, you know, day if we could just set a time, <coughs> noon one something. I you know, I I have to teach in the afternoon, but uh, I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if obviously it didn't work here to get everybody on here, but. It looks like the 13th, uh, you know, minus, minus Deb um, is probably the, the one majority of the board members along with ourselves can be there. Um, so it makes sense to have a separate meeting and, um, you know, March 11th, uh, immediately following the commission meeting to meet with them. Sounds like a good idea. Um, but uh, immediately following the meeting, but you're not available in the afternoon, Tom? Oh, I, I, I got to leave at 2.30. Okay, or so prior two, to... 2 o'clock. So, board members, you're leaning towards a meeting with them on the 13th? That's or the extension board at minus seven. one? At 7 o'clock? So yeah. what, I, what I heard is extension board and the commission on the 13th at 7 o'clock. And then, if possible, on March 11th, following immediately following the board meeting done by 2 o'clock with SDSU and Sonia? Yeah. See, see if they're available. I, Looking for head nods or I something. I think yeah. SDSU could be invited to that 7 o'clock work session, too. They've not had an opportunity, obviously, to answer to that one, if they, if they would like to. Hear board? what the extension board has to say. Yeah. Well, so, I think aren't they kind of one and the same? And if Sonia can't make it, then so I'll just have all one. Ryan, is that what you're thinking? No, I guess you know if Sonia can't make the uh, Thursday the thirteenth, um, you know, isn't the extension or isn't SDSU and Sonia kind of the together? same one? The same. same same thing. So, you know, if they want to come to that one or not, but I think we should still have that one on the thirteenth, even if SDSU does not make it. So. Are you ask? Is the board asking me to invite SDSU to the meeting on the 13th? And who do I invite? Well, I, that's the problem. Is if Sonya's not going to be there, I'm not sure if we're going to get anywhere from there. So I would say let's invite them to the Tuesday and see if they can make the Tuesday. And during our after a meeting or work session. I'm hearing after. different things. Sonia does up. not have to be there to invite to invite uh, the Barry or Carla. So that you want them to go to both meetings? Well, I, I think we should give them the opportunity if they would like to. They don't obviously have to. Yeah, um, and I've been communicating with them, and they would love to meet with the commission. Who are they? Uh, the university, Barry, Carla, and Peter. So you're you're saying you only want them at that eleventh meeting? Well, they can from that meeting we can make that decision about the okay. 13th, you know. Okay. And then hopefully Sonia could make it there with them. And so just to clarify then, we're saying for, uh, sorry, I'm going to keep doing this 100 times over. On the 11th, then I would be inviting Sonia, Barry, Carla, and Peter mm -hmm. to a meeting immediately following the board meeting. Maybe I can just ensure that you guys adjourn by 11 o'clock so you could start at 11 mm -hmm. so Tom can be done by 2. Yeah, that'd be great. And if we could uh, change from this format, to community uh, room yes please yep. and okay. I do have the community room reserved for the 13th I believe I'll have to look at that I mean it would be great if they would want to come to the 13th 
but you know, from this thing here, Sonia can't make it, and I think she needs to be involved in the discussion. Absolutely. And just have, you know, maybe they can't do it the 11th. I mean, we'll just yeah. throw it out there and see how it works. Wait a minute. Um, what do you mean, throw which out, out there? Yeah, I might 11, have lost you guys. 11. Okay. Yeah, I mean. It's still where you said. If it works, okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> and then if it doesn't, then we'll have to plan B. So. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, we have to be out of here anyways. The city has, we'll go into here. Okay, so we should be fine with the community room for both those meeting dates too then. I'll schedule those right now. Um, I don't have anything else to report. I did wanna, I know it's on my written report, but did anybody have any questions about the roof leak in the courthouse? Did, oh, it was the courthouse. Yeah, it was in the courthouse. Um, I reported on that and there there was a nice jam up there. We did get permission to put ice melt on. Um, John's got some thing, you know, buckets and stuff that they're keeping until um, the contractor gets here to inspect the roof because, because of our warranty, we have to have um, a contractor through our warranty do the work and inspect the, the problem first so that we don't void our warranty. But um, we are getting it taken care of. I will have to do some repair work to one of the walls that had some bubbling and peeling of paint due to the water. but and some ceiling tiles to replace, which we may look at submitting that through our liability insurance again too. So as long as nobody had any questions on that, I just wanted to make sure. It, there is an open house Thursday, but this isn't in areas where people are gonna see anyways. It's in the judge's offices. For the open house, I should mention that too. I had it on my report, but um, for the open house on Thursday, uh, there will be court staff there that are gonna take people back like into the clerk of court's office um, we're going to have all the courtrooms open and otherwise inside office space they'll be guided by the staff of that office so that we don't have just people wandering into certain areas. Judges office will, offices will not be open. So it's going to be more of the public courtrooms to kind of see what that looks like. Look at the clerk of court's office and the uh, circuit court offices. Okay. It took me a while. You had a tear with Jeff, Jeff Weldon. I don't know what you guys are crying about, but I realize it's a tour. <laughs> I caught that, but I wasn't going to be. <laughs> yeah, anybody that read the read the report, tear means tour. <laughs> okay. Anything else? It's okay, I do it all the time. Check works great, but it lets a lot of stuff go by too. Is that it, Steph? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. On the other stuff. Thank you, uh, Deputy State's Attorney. Report, Abigail, do you have anything to report to us? Just a couple of items. Uh, I want to apologize for my absence at the last meeting. My office had passed around the flu, and I guess it was my turn to get it that week. Um, tomorrow, I am heading to Vermilion to the law school to conduct interviews for our summer internship position. So I just want to, again, thank the commission for allowing us to have that in our office. I'm a huge proponent of it. I was the first intern that we ever had in that office, and so obviously I'm a, I'm a fan. But we have had so many applicants this year that Clyde and I felt like it would be beneficial for me to go actually meet with the students rather than do phone interviews. Um, so I'll just do those quick tomorrow afternoon and I think we'll be able to find an excellent candidate to come help us this summer and hopefully they'll find it beneficial as well. Um, on Thursday, I'm gonna be having another kind of group meeting with all parties involved that handle the involuntary mental commitments and I know I've told you in the past, I've had a couple of those, and I just feel like whenever we come across a few hiccups in the system, I find it beneficial to just gather the parties, and that would be me and Marty and Jeff Miller and uh, Karen Weber from the hospital and Bart Sweeby, just get together, kind of hash out some of those issues, and Mike Forgey from East Central, just make sure everybody's on the same page, and then rather than have those issues come up again, so I like to kind of nip those in the bud when we have them. Um, on Monday, this coming Monday, I've been asked to speak at what's called a pride panel. The Department of Social Services puts on, they call it a pride panel, I think at least once a year, if not more, but it's a, basically a training and a presentation for potential foster parents and adoptive placements. And they try to bring in just representatives from different entities that may become involved and they stem from abuse and neglected children cases. So I kind of provide some of the legal insight and 
I spoke last year and they asked me to come back and I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing that people from our community are willing to do that and so I'm happy to provide any insight just to tell them how they might be involved in the legal process as well because um, sometimes the foster families do get involved. And um, I guess I would also thank the commission for the open house we're having. I guess, you know, Clyde and I spend a good majority of our time over at the courthouse. That's where we conduct a lot of our business. So it's, uh, it's exciting for everyone to get to see the changes. And, um, you know, I plan to be there for some of it if anyone has any questions for me. But, uh, you know, I think Clyde and I have been very happy with the changes. And it's, it's fun to be able to use some of this new technology and new equipment. And it makes our lives easier and the lives easier of our staff. So we certainly appreciate that. And we're just busy as usual. I think Clyde had over 120 people in court yesterday morning. So wow. we are not slow. So <laughs> uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer it. Otherwise, that's all for me. Any questions of Abigail? Thank you. Uh, and um, I hope you and Commissioner Wyseth keep your, uh, you're not going to pass this uh, arm in a sling thing <laughs> around to the whole board. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope that uh, you're after your little tumble on the ice that your arm comes along real well. <laughs> okay, uh, commissioner reports. Um, start, start on the other end last time, so I'll let uh, Stephanie go first this time. Okay. Um, February 12th, I attended the Will Luncheon, and that's a Women in Leadership Luncheon. The topic had to do with crucial conversation well, dealing with difficult people, and I really thought kind of in my job, especially as of late, that might be helpful. <laughs> and February 15th, I attended the legislative forum held here to get updates on what our legislators are working on. On February 20th, I attended the extension board meeting. Um, we were short two board members, so some of the discussion was limited until we had a full board. However, we did discuss some of the expectations expressed by the commission, such as a strategic plan, and three to five years out is what we'll be looking at, and a monthly report from either the 4-H advisor or extension board members to be done with department head reports. We discussed the summit and our budget, which brought us to expenditures for shooting sports. We have two different breakdowns for billing from the Outdoor Adventure Center, and both were presented. And <laughs> the one that the shooting sports instructors had was a surprise to another part of the shooting sports board um, who had given us the original one that was presented to us. So it's kind of a right hand not knowing for sure what the left hand is doing, I think, situation. And the culmination of a long discussion was that we would be receiving a statement for January and the extension board approved up to $1,500 for the month of January for shooting sports activity and storage of the equipment. And when we got down to really nitpicking at figures, uh, it appears the original cost that was presented to us, the commissioners, is not applicable because three of the disciplines that were included in that are not shooting at the Outdoor Adventure Center. And so um, there are some issues there that need to be worked out as well as storage issues. Um, we, cold storage would be all that would be necessary. And so there, there was a lot of discussion along those lines and hopefully we'll keep working on it with their staff and, and get things straightened out. Um, I was really pleased and I'm, and I'm happy to tell you that the Extension Board is working on a plan. We're in the process of developing it in phases and the name of the plan is Brookings County 4-H Forward. And I think that's exactly where we need to be looking. And I think that the board members are well aware that we need to all work together to move forward for the benefit of our youth. And we are on our way to doing that. I like their phases, I like their plan, and I'll give you more detail on that as we develop. Okay, anything else? Okay, Ryan? Uh, attended the Joint Powers uh, board meeting here um, on the 13th of February. Couple things um, we discussed. Uh, we talked about uh, 
arbitration decision uh, that we uh, came out on the good end of that one. Uh, but we still do have a little bit of expenses on that. We had originally agreed to split the cost of the arbitrator and, uh, and so uh, just under $3,000 will be split equally between the county and the city for our portion of that. Um, also having some issues with uh, humidity levels, uh, especially over on our level on the county side and uh, they're in the process of looking at a dehumidification system modification and there's some quotes on that but we'll find some more information out on that to see how we can better handle the humidity problem there it's too dry it's below 10 percent humidity and so we're working on that um, and then there's some other questions on uh, um, uh, school board talking a little bit about uh, using the city county building here and stuff like that and how that would work um, because of uh, you know, our video technology here and the ability to televise. Uh, I think that's for them, uh, interesting for them too, but uh, there's a lot of questions that would come up with that of who's running it, who's gonna take care of it and all that good stuff. So long ways to go if that would come up, but that might be something down the road that there, there might be a request for that. And so, but otherwise, um, that's uh, there. They also talked a little bit of our backup generator uh, and we're still working on that and thinking that's gonna probably come to fruition there pretty quick, so. Um, then I went to the BDC meeting on the 19th, uh, received their annual report. I don't know if everybody's received one of these or not, um, but uh, very nice piece here. And uh, we'll have to get some more copies for you and stuff here. Very well put together, uh, very positive. Uh, again, uh, moving forward, strong economy and job growth. And they're really uh, visioning Sh Charette was talked about in here too. So. Uh, it's a very nice, nice piece. Um, I'll have to get you some. You can take a look at it right now. Um, so that was one of the things we talked about, uh, construction update of their new building um, that they're, they're working for, uh, and then just the key projects updates and, and things like that. So it wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't a huge, uh, long meeting by any means, but uh, they did elect some new officers and some new members were involved and all that good stuff. So. Uh, the new chair is Jason Merkley uh, from Brookings Health, and uh, um, so he'll be running it, and um, so that'll be good. And then uh, after that, um, yeah, that's about it. I have Thursday, I have a hospital board meeting um, tonight. I'll be heading to a uh, retirement uh, thing for Daryl England, and, uh, and then the courthouse remodeling on Thursday also. Um, so I won't be able to stay very long there because our hospital board meeting will be at 5.30 and moved it up a half hour. So that's about it. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Tom? Okay. Uh, 17th East Central Behavioral Health. Um, they're thinking of adding a couple more, two or three more new board members. Their board's kind of going through a transition. And some of the names that came up I think will be um, very good. Uh, when that's all finalized, I'll give you up to date. And I think you'll, I'll bring a board list and you'll see who was on there. And, and that was, because uh, there's a few things that need to get worked through. Um, then Growth Partnership uh, did not meet because it was, the meeting was scheduled about the same time as Dr. Berg's uh, memorial. And, at, and so that just wasn't gonna work because we have so many board members involved there. Um, they, we did sign two new clients. Uh, we lost a couple small ones. Uh, we got a couple uh, taking a look uh, this week. And so things are, and I like the two new ones. One especially is gonna, is exactly what it's all about. It's an ag manufacturing and working with engineering students at SDSU. And that's just the kind of thing. The other one, uh, might take a couple more steps be, before we get in some long-term benefit, but once again, it has to do with the university and uh, technology. So that's all pretty good. Uh, I did go to the chamber, which uh, I saw Stephanie was there and stuff, and uh, Al did put a little dog and pony show with some little slides that you had uh, and about all the good things that are happening in Brookings. It was a real feel-good uh, experience. Um, and then I, ha I handed out, uh, and I wish I could do uh, flow charts, 
as much as uh, Stephanie does. Uh, did everybody get one of these? Because I just want to point out a couple things. Um, you know, from the summit, I was really bothered by it. And the word communication comes to mind in that um, when it, it was communication so bad, we didn't even communicate what we wanted to do. And I think a lot of people thought it was a rally, it was safe 4-H, and it was, you know, something way more than that. And as a commissioner, I got into this as uh, two daughters that participated in 4-H. But being at the bottom at the club stage gives you no idea of what is going on up above. And my hope with the summit was like a business, you do an organizational chart, a structure to get an understanding of the relationship, and you do an operational structure, how they work with each, each the structure works. And then uh, from that, I was hoping that uh, we'd have facts laid out for the audience that so everybody started at the same page, so we had a nice base to have the summit and add you know new information. As far as we could have, I guess, saved some money or whatever, and done the summit just with the leaders. My original thought was to have the public there because when I made a bunch of phone calls in October, November, I found a lot of people that had a misunderstanding that were in 4-H, and I thought, well, let's get them all of them there. But I don't think they left with any more information as to where we're headed. But I, uh, the organizational chart, I, th I just was kind of curious, can you work around it like Boys and Girls Club, Boy Scout, Girl Scout? No, you, you gotta work with the USDA and you gotta work with the National Institute of Food, uh, uh, National Institute of Food and Nutrition, that handles 4-H. The 109 land grade co grant colleges are uh, part of it. Then that's SDSU. Off the side, the National 4-H Council is a foundation that funnels money back up and back down. And then you have our staff, Barry Dunn, Carla, and Peter, which I don't have all their time. Well, Barry, of course, is uh, ahead of the College of Agriculture. But, uh, and then you have SDSU, um, I mean, South Dakota 4-H Foundation. That's a side deal. That's over there. And they're finally Mac holding money for virtually every county, 4-H, and then funneling money and, uh, and, and sits out on the side. Then we have Sonia who works for them, and, uh, which is really Brookings County 4-H, and that's where we come in. And then we're the, the money. And then the, I put down 4-H Promotion and Expansion Committee, not the Extension Board. Because when I was out, I spent an hour talking to Sonia and S Susan and trying to get a handle on it more. This is my second visit out there, and every time I leave with more answers and questions and whatever than I first time, but she had the stewards of progress item there. And uh, I, what's that all about? And so stewards of progress, and of course 4-H has gone through two major revisions or extension service has. Well, this is the latest and greatest, you know, from 2011. And when I started reading this, and I handed you all out some, uh, I saw all kinds of things I didn't even know about, and that probably the biggest thing is there's only supposed to be seven extension boards, and there's, we're supposed to be working with the expansion and promotion board is how they want us to work. And uh, so I've handed those out. And then, of course, um, well, then I wanted to find out more about the 4-H Promotion and Expansion Board, and, and that's exact, they're doing, they're supposed to be doing exactly what we wanted, growth in 4-H. And so the, the, it sits there. Now, then you go into s state laws, and of course, um, not to blame the legislature, but they, 1939, we're operating under, and there's been two major revisions since then. And I found three statutes that refer to extension boards but don't require them. But there is a fourth one that has to do with getting the money and uh, to, uh, ex to extension boards. And then they use that word. And so the legislature is saying, you gotta have an extension board. The people that run extensions say, you're not supposed to have an extension board, you're supposed to work with somebody else. So 
and I want to continue with our summit process and with our current extension board. I just want to propose the concept. And these, um, these are only con I'm just kicking around my head. I just want you to start thinking too that we change our bylaws and our extension board to mirror exactly the uh, promotion and expansion board. And so we're dealing with one. Um, some people may be a little nervous about the makeup of it and that we don't have enough control. But I always figure if you got control of the money, you got a lot of control. And, uh, and I trust these people that would be appointed. And maybe if, if we did make it the same, some of the very same extension board members we have now would just go right in there. A lot of their thoughts that they're working on, Stephanie, which I'm glad they're doing, will all fit. And so we get in concert. This has nothing to do with the, the money, nothing to do with the facility. We can conquer that at budget time and the time, you know, that there's other, but first we got, I had to get my hand, well, Denny made that comment, what is the structure, you know, at the last meeting? I'm thinking, you know, I still don't have a clear picture. I had a few sheets and stuff, and, and, I, and I wrote this as a draft because I'm not sure I still have it. As we proceed, let's see if we can, if that, any of this is right, and that we develop a, a clear picture of our role in 4-H. And so um, that's what I got, the, the statutes, the 4-H uh, expand, I keep working the word marketing because in business you always have marketing, promotion, promotion and expansion, and uh, the organizational and the stewards of progress and see if we can get going in a direction, so. Uh, I may be so far behind you, I may be boring you with this, but uh, I l I've learned a lot myself uh, going out and getting this information. I, I think it's good, and, and promotion and expansion, that's what they have been doing, is, is trying to grow 4-H, and they have come up with extra ideas and to do that. And um, so, you know, and have sim similar, several members of the extension board are also on the promotion and expansion, and have talked numerous times of combining the two boards. I, I think that's a great idea. Anything else, Tom? That's occupied your time. Well, thanks for gathering all the information, and uh, you know, and I'm like you. I, it's it's rather confusing. I sat down to try and figure the figure all of this out, and, and uh, pretty soon you got policy conflicting with statute and and nobody knows what to do until we get somehow get it coordinated and get it all so that policy matches statute and uh, it, it is rather confusing okay um, I guess I had a couple meetings um, and uh, one of them was the Joint Powers Board and Ryan done a very good job of giving a report on that and so uh, I don't have anything to add to Ryan's report regarding that meeting. A um, couple other things, and, and uh, this is, I just wanted to uh, thank Marty and Bob Hill. I just took some time and I went to the home builder show and I went past the booth on Sunday, Marty. It was, wasn't your time to work, but Bob was there. Done a great job exp you know, on, on emergency planning and, and so forth. So I, want to thank both of you for taking time to be out there and it's great to have a county presence uh, at a facility or a, a show like that. The other meeting I had was the um, LAPC uh, meeting. Uh, we had a, I thought, a very, very good meeting. We had excellent attendance and a lot of our corporates were there and we had good discussion. Um, we reorganized Pete Bolzer as the president and Bob McGrath as, as the new vice president of the uh, county LAPC. Um, Bob reported that uh, we've got 20 RSVP members uh, and the Citizen Corps lost some funding so they're using some our, uh, that funding uh, and kind of working together so to keep our RSV, RSVP folks going. Marty, did you have a problem with one of the RSVP cars? I was talking to one of your drivers yeah it, it uh, but we we took another one that's waiting to be surplused and we were able to get that going okay and so we're back but we were down for about a month it, it was gonna cost like three grand to put the fix the one we're using and it has hundred eighty thousand miles and it's just not worth putting that much into that car yeah. so but we're up and running now 
Yeah, you know, Dave Peterson was saying he was driving it, and it's, he had trouble. It wasn't work uh, over 35 miles yeah, an hour. I said, yeah. Dave, I did, you didn't go very fast anyway. I was just going to say, so. that's their average <laughs> speed, probably. <Yeah. laughs> anyway, uh, but there is, there is uh, good participation in the RSVP program, and, and they do a good job. Um, then we talked a little bit about uh, the uh, basin electric uh, exercise. It went very well. We did discover that, uh, or they weren't aware that, uh, Hendricks was a, was a part of the service area, and so they're going to incorporate those people in some of their uh, plans in the future. Um, then uh, the uh, uh, good discussion that we had, uh, versing, uh, one of the things was SDSU is trying to get a handle on tracking chemicals, uh, and it's very difficult because oftentimes for experimentation purposes, chemicals come in you might get it in a very small vial, and it has to be taken care of immediately, and so the professor or whomever's in charge of the research then has it delivered directly to them, uh, but it can be a, you know, kind of a dangerous quote-unquote chemical, uh, you know, and so how do you have that inventory and how do you keep track of it? But that's uh, one thing they want to work on because as research continues to grow and expand at the university, there's a lot of these these uh, chemicals, hazardous materials that are, that are used in research all over, and they want to try and get a handle on it so that when first responders come, they're aware of what they might be uh, dealing with uh, in the event of any kind of an emergency. Um, and that, that gives them a, a greater level of response at, at the university. So everybody applauded them on their efforts, albeit it's going to be a very difficult task and it isn't one that you're going to be able to accomplish in, in just a couple months. I mean, it'd probably take two, three years to try and get it figured out how you maintain that inventory. Um, the other thing that, that came up as, as we discussed a lot uh, during the meeting, um, the new buzzword in, in government and, and in community developing, development uh, is resilience. And uh, because of the lack oftentimes of dollars uh, or financial support and grants from both state and federal levels. And uh, it was, uh, as we talked about it, and we had uh, a lot of our major industries and the railroad represented, and mental, mental health came up as a point of, of concern by everybody, by the large employers, uh, as well as those of us in, that were there from local government, law enforcement, et cetera. Um, at, as a result of that, and I had mentioned earlier, uh, we have uh, Mike Forgey from uh, the mental health uh, group down here is going to come to our meeting on the 25th of March and give his little 10, 15 minute presentation that he gives to service clubs and that so that we get a better understanding of the changes that they're making to be kind of a bellwether uh, facility here in the Midwest, uh, and uh, I think uh, all of our uh, LEPC members asked to be included on our email lists and be informed, and I think there's probably quite a few of those are going to uh, come to that meeting just to learn because they understand the importance of mental health with, within their employment staffs and the issues regarding mental health. So I think that'll be... Uh, be a good move, and uh, from the resilience side, uh, we're doing uh, some checking with uh, through the National Association to see because they've been doing a lot on it, and there's information, and uh, we're going to gather what we have and share it with our local industries. Um, so that I thought uh, I thought Bob done a good job, and um, I look forward to. Uh, they don't meet that often, but I think it's going to be an interesting uh, experience, and we're going to really move forward. Uh, with the LAPC tra uh, training and information. Um, I think with that, um, we do have listed the correspondence that we received, and are there any questions? I have a question yeah. for you. Who did LAPC decide they were going to be under? Uh, nobody right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't get any, we, we didn't get any uh, uh, money. We weren't awarded any money uh, this last go round. And uh, so we'll, Bob is, um, is working on it. He's getting all the reports in, and we'll, 
we will make make sure that we will be funded the next go around. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, there being nothing else for the good of the order, I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you one and all. <laughs>